Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. By now you've already seen part one and part two of the time belt videos on the sandbar. I uh, know a lot of you commented, why aren't you talking? Why are these videos silent? Uh, if you haven't been a subscriber or been watching my videos for a long time, back when I started the channel, uh, all of my videos were silent. I did not talk in them. I did not appear in front of the camera. It was straight DIY, how to, step by step, uh, how to repair a certain topic. It was basically a visual service manual giving torque specifications and procedures as outlined in the Subaru service manuals. Uh, you know, in the last two years or so, I started talking, got in front of the camera, and uh, changed format of how the channel was running. So being that the Sandbar is primarily a non-US vehicle, primarily found in Japan, I figured that the majority of people that are gonna be searching for the videos on water pump and time belt replacement and the ignition tune-up and all the other videos that I have filmed and uh, you haven't seen yet, I haven't edited yet, and uh, future videos, I figured that as far as repair videos, I would make those silent, non-talking, that's why you notice that the new videos have Japanese uh, subtitles on them because most of the people probably seeking out this as information are gonna be from Japan, uh, whereas most of you US viewers are basically watching it solely for entertainment purposes. I know there are a few of you that do have sandbars here in the US and are enjoying the videos and helping uh, you know, to work on your vehicle, uh, but the vast majority of people in the US watching it is basically just entertainment purposes. Uh, so that's why I did what I did as far as the video format. So since I didn't talk in the videos, that's what we're gonna do in this video. I've got all the parts. Uh, we're gonna put in clips from the previous repair uh, and talk about the things I didn't talk about as I was doing them just because I wanted to keep the repair videos quiet, silent, and uh, in a different format. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the parts I pulled off and uh, start talking about what was failure points, what was issues, uh, things I found along the way doing the jobs, and uh, all those things I normally put into the videos uh, when I do commentate as I work. All right guys, so in the videos, I'm gonna do different videos when we get to different repairs. So we're just gonna cover what was done in the time belt water pump videos. We still have part three, the finale uh, coming up, should be up Sunday. This video should be up on Wednesday. Uh, so we've got our uh, alternator belt. I did not actually change it, replace it during the video. I've replaced it since. Uh, so we'll just talk about it. Uh, the original belt uh, was a Bondo. RAFK 285, I replaced it with a Deco 15. 285 should be the part number, but I got a 280, which is slightly shorter. Still worked, but uh, 285 is the correct uh, V-belt for the alternator belt on the carbureted non-supercharged. Uh, this belt wasn't terrible, but it was older, and uh, you know it was starting to show some age, and it would squeal when I turned the headlights on electrical loads uh, at night. So I went ahead and put that on. I think you can get this Deco V-Belt uh, from Advanced Auto Parts. I think it's under $10. I actually did find the Bondo belt on Amazon. I think I'll go ahead and add it to the description of the video, add it to my Amazon storefront. So really quick, easy on that. Two 12 millimeter bolts, you loosen up on the alternator, push the alternator down, put the belt on, pry bar, pull tension on the alternator, tighten the belts, uh, the bolts, super easy to do. So. Otherwise, we've got our water pump, we've got our tensioner, we've got our thermostat, we've got our timing belt, and we've got a crank and cam seal. All Subaru Genuine, as you see, which also took me forever to acquire. Uh, so really quickly, part numbers I showed on the video, but we'll go ahead and talk about it real quick. The tensioner is a 13070KA120. Uh, I don't believe you can buy this from the U.S. Subaru dealers, I think this was a Japanese only. I don't think this is a uh, shared part with the Justy's 1.2 liter three cylinder. There are some parts that are interchangeable, like the rear main seal on the EN07, which is the engine code for this 658 cc. I've been saying 660, but it's technically 658 cc. Uh, the rear main seal on this is the same as the EF12, which is the 1.2 liter three-cylinder Subaru Justy engine. So there are some interchanges. Uh, this tensioner, I believe, is an NSK. Uh, this one is pretty trashed. 
Uh, one thing I noticed while I was doing the time belt job on this truck, uh, I believe, look at this, you see all that? That's like silt. Uh, the cam gear, the crank sprocket, and as you see here, the timing tensioner has a fine layer of silt packed all in uh, to all the pulleys. So I think that my truck may have been involved in flooding uh, perhaps during the 2011 tsunami uh, that resulted in the uh, Fukushima disaster of the nuclear power plant. Uh, that's just an, you know, I'm just saying that I don't have any proof, but the fact that there's silt all in the timing cover and on the timing set, I would believe that this might have seen some time underwater. <sighs> then we got that off. Uh, this is a Koyo bearing, so same as Subaru used on the EJ series. They used Koyos, they used NTNs, and they used NSK. Uh, the bearing still moved smoothly. Uh, it was a lot freer turning than the one I put on there. It had not got rough, had not made noise yet, uh, but I'm not going to not replace a tensioner when I do a timing belt job. Subaru advises 100,000 kilometer replacements for timing belts and components on the EN07 and the sandbars. And uh, I believe that's like 68 thousand miles correct i'll correct it on screen i'm trying to i've looked at conversions between kilometers and miles so much on uh trying to translate the service intervals on this thing i've gotten kind of confused so i think a hundred thousand miles is like sixty eight thousand or a hundred thousand kilometers is like sixty eight thousand miles but like i said i'll put it on the screen if i'm wrong or off severely uh, so there's our tensioner no real issue with it uh i don't I didn't get a new tensioner spring, as you saw in the video. It's just a regular metal spring. Uh, one end hooks on the ear of the tensioner. One end hooks on an anchor on the, I can't remember if it was on the engine block or the cylinder head at this point. And then there's a circular portion down here in the ear that there's actually a knob, a little piece that sticks out that you have to put that on. That's what pivots uh, the tensioner on with the slot and the 12 millimeter bolt that holds it in place. Uh, onto the thermostat. Uh, thermostat is a 21200KA122. Uh, I haven't looked to see if that uh, interchanges with any US spec Subarus. It might, like I said, share with the Justy. Uh, nothing visually looked bad with the thermostat, although normally you don't see anything visually bad with them. Uh, I noted in the video that it's got not one but two jiggle valves, and they do have to be in the 12 o'clock position when installed in the engine. Uh, nothing really crazy or abnormal there. Uh, it's just a thermostat that needs to be replaced. Anytime you do a time belt job, why not put a thermostat in it? You got the cooling system drained already. Uh, go ahead and put it on there and uh, don't worry about it. Timing belt. Timing belt is a 13160KA160. Uh, cool thing about the timing belt, I, I, I think I touched on it, or I might not have touched on it in the uh, Actually, I didn't touch on it in the YouTube video. I, uh, I made an Instagram post about it. Uh, but the timing belt actually comes with a new little sticker. It's a two-piece sticker uh, that you put over the timing cover and you put your date and mileage for the next service. And then they actually give you a uh, clear sticker, kind of like lamination to put over it once you've marked it in pen to protect your uh, writing. Really thoughtful, really cool that Subaru adds that in there. So timing belt, age and all that, completely unknown. Uh, there's a lot of cracking in the belt, uh, blistering, uh, starting to see some lines in it. Uh, but this does have an original Fuji Heavy Industries Subaru timing belt on it. Uh, very faint numbers on it are 13028KA090. So the number has superseded from this belt. This could be an original belt seeing as how uh, the sandbar is only at 78,000 miles and it's not required to be replaced till 100,000. It should have been replaced already for age. I would hope it was been replaced, but this might actually be the original factory timing belt. Uh, if we look here very faintly, I know you're probably not gonna be able to see this. Uh, there's the arrow pointing this way. There's Fuji Heavy Industries uh, symbol. There's Subaru, there's the part number. Do not crimp as almost all timing belts say. And then it looks like it says power grip made in Japan. Uh, so power grip appears to be the OE manufacturer of this. It's not Misaboshi like the EJ series timing belts. Then we've got a 104YU16 it appears. And uh, that's basically all the writing I see. Uh, the factory marks on the belt. 
I could not find. Uh, looks like there's a date stamp, 406. I would guess that's a date stamp. So it looks like the time belt was replaced and uh, sometime around 2006, 2007. I can only guess that's a date stamp. 4-06 uh, would make me think that was uh, April of 2006. Uh, but the timing belt is marked, uh, as we saw on the new one when I installed it, they do mark uh, the cam and the crank pulleys. So really easy to put on. You only have two marks to line up, slide it on. Uh, you've got your tensioner pushed all the way up and locked with the 12 mil. Uh, basically just loosen it. The spring tensions the belt properly and you torque it to spec. Nothing crazy, nothing difficult. Uh, super easy timing to get a uh, job to do. Uh, it only took about 15 minutes to get to the timing belt. It's really, really easy. You saw in the video, we jack it up, uh, remove the rear wheel on the driver's side, uh, take the shock off, the splash guard, your alternator belt, crank pulley, and the timing cover, and you're right there. So super easy vehicle to work on and service. Uh, then we got our crank and camshaft seals. Uh, the crank seal is 8067310. Again, have not looked at the crank and cam seal to see if they switch over to anything US based. Uh, but we did have severe oil leaks on this uh, truck when I got it. Uh, I thought it was all coming from the rocker cover, but on further inspection, once I got the timing covers off, as you saw, there was lots of leakage from the crank seal, the cam seal, and the water pump was actually leaking as well. So this crank seal is hard as a rock. Uh, it's probably the original, probably was not replaced, probably when they did the timing belt. If that is not the original, they probably just threw a belt on it and didn't do any other service. Uh, this thing is, like I said, hard as a rock, was leaking, uh, should have been replaced long ago. So we get, you know, we got a brand new original crank seal in there, so no more worries about that oil leak. Our cam seal was an 8067382000. It was leaking as well, pretty profusely. Again, hard as a rock. It is an NGK seal like the crank. Uh, again, rock hard, I could probably just get it to crack. Yep, as you see, it's cracking. Uh, or maybe you can see, it's probably too dark, but there's cracks in it. It is, you know, it's just brittle and old from all the heat cycles and age. So it should have been replaced, uh, but was not. Uh, last but not least, we're gonna look at the water pump. Uh, before I get rained out here, it's starting to drizzle again. Uh, the water pump was leaking. Uh, there was coolant from the weep hole. And uh, check this out. Put this up to my microphone. It's nowhere near as crusty sounding as it was the other day when I took it off. Uh, but it was pretty daggum crusty sounding. Uh, there was a lot of corrosion. The coolant had not been serviced as it should have been. There was a lot of buildup. Uh, you can see the rust on the impeller of the water pump here. Uh, lots of crusties, lots of rust. Uh, they did not properly keep the cooling system flushed out and serviced. Uh, the O-ring here, the seal for the water pump uh, was still in good shape, was not leaking there. Uh, but if we look where the weep hole is, it's right under the pulley here and you can Sorry guys, uh, if you look, the weep hole is right here under the pulley and you can see where it had been leaking. It was wet with uh, some coolant here, uh, as well as all the other gunk that was floating around inside the timing cover from the oil leaking uh, at the cam and crank seals. Uh, this is the pin I was talking about where the tensioner uh, pivots on. This is the bolt hole where the tensioner rides back and forth. Uh, six water pump bolts hold the water pump in place. You got two longer bolts up here and four of the exact same size bolts down here. Very simple, easy to replace. Uh, the issue I had was there are two alignment dowels. Uh, one where my pinky is and one where a pointer finger is. This one had actually rusted seized to the water pump. Uh, so when I went to pry it off, it actually pulled the dowel pin out of the block. I had to take a punch and a hammer and knock that out of the water pump, reinstall it in the engine block, uh, knock the rust off of it so the new pump would slide over easily. Uh, one cool thing about the water pump, you saw I did drain the coolant. There is a drain plug here on the water pump so you can drain the coolant from the engine. Uh, if you drain the radiator, you're not gonna drain the coolant in the engine for taking the water pump off. Uh, so that was pretty neat. Uh, 
pretty simple, tiny little water pump. Uh, not terribly expensive. I believe it was like $120 or so for the Japanese original. Um, to get it to me here in the US, I think in Japan they sell for like 50, 60 bucks. So, uh, parts are actually very reasonable for these uh you know oe subaru parts the the expense is uh shipping them into the u.s and finding an outlet to purchase them and get them to the u.s that's the trouble so we've looked at everything now for the time belt job kind of went over you know it was pretty self-explanatory it's a very simple job to do um i did make a custom crank pulley holder and i'll go grab that and show that to you now all right, so didn't really talk about it in the video, just showed it in use. I uh, did make a Instagram post about this, I believe. And I believe I showed it on TikTok. Uh, but this is a custom crankshaft pulley holding tool to properly torque the crank bolt uh, for the EN07. Uh, the crank pulley is much smaller than the EJ series. So the Company 23 tool I have to remove EJ uh, harmonic balancer crank pulleys is not gonna work for this. Uh, it cost me about $28 to fabricate this tool. Uh, made it with stuff I purchased from Home Depot. Uh, this is, I think, one inch heat shrink tubing to make the grip on the handle. Uh, this was a quarter inch, just piece of flat bar steel. Um, I ended up, sorry about the focus here, guys. I ended up taking and cutting a small piece off put it on a, a pivot with a bolt through it, uh, notched it here, notched it here to get a socket into the crank bolt. Uh, I believe these bolts are M8 by 1.25. I think that was the thread pitch on the inside of the crank pulley. There were four threaded holes. So basically all you got to do is uh, loosen the jam nut down here, uh, take a 13 millimeter wrench and run these into the bolt holes hold the handle and uh, you know that holds the engine holds the crank pulley while you torque the bolt the bolt was torqued to 108 newton meters and uh, gets the job done so purpose-built little tool again I think it took 28 bucks took me about an hour to make it um, a lot of people commented on TikTok in response to me making this tool why don't you just buy a strap wrench from Harbor Freight uh, why buy some cheap Chinese tool from Harbor Freight uh, when I can make a specialty purpose-built tool for this EN07. I might use it one more time, uh, you know, or because there's not that many of them over here in the States, I'm not going to use it on a ton of those vehicles unless I, you know, start importing them or start hoarding sandbars or something like that. But, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's fun to make tools. So, you know, why not? Uh, but that was that custom tool I made for the crankshaft pulley. Just wanted to throw that into this video before I end it out. Uh, I think I've hit everything I wanted to talk about, uh, failures and issues with parts. Um, any other questions you have, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them on the time about job for the sandbar. Uh, like I said, this video should be out on Wednesday. Uh, Sunday, we should have part three, the finale of the timing belt water pump uh, job. Uh, I believe next week I will be having the ignition tune-up job film done. Uh, I've already changed the spark plug, spark plug wires, distributor cap, rotor button. Uh, did the whole electrical tune-up on the car, truck. Um, it's got a newer air filter in it. I did do a fuel filter. I don't know if I'll make that a standalone video. I've done an oil and oil and filter replacement, and I've done a fuel filter replacement. I might combine the oil. Uh, change and the fuel filter replacement in one video. It's probably gonna be short anyway. It's fairly simple to do. And um, then we've got another video coming up. I installed an autometer, uh, two and a quarter, two and a half inch tachometer in the sandbar. I've always wanted to find a uh, JDM original Subaru uh, Di uh, Dias or Dias. Uh, sandbar wagon instrument cluster that has the factory tech. You know, I love uh, factory parts. I don't like to modify past non-factory. So 
A lot of people on the Instagram posts are like, wait, you actually put an autometer gauge in your sandbar? You wired in something non-OE? And yes, I did in the interim until I can find a JDM uh, cluster with the tachometer, and then I will install that and remove the aftermarket uh, tachometer. But in the meantime, I just wanted to install it so I could see my RPMs. And uh, funny enough, at 60-ish uh, miles an hour, that this truck spins 5,000 RPM. So all of you people with uh, older EJ22 Legacies and Imprezas and uh, uh, Outbacks that uh, were freaking out about spinning, uh, you know, 4,000 RPM at 80,000 miles or 80 miles an hour or whatever, or somewhere in that range, uh, try doing 5K at 60 and fifth gear. You know, that's what this little bugger does. So. I think I've rambled on long enough. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.